Hello and welcome to a video on collecting like terms. In the previous video we looked at identifying like terms and what they were. We looked at the difference between like and unlike terms. So in this video we're going to simplify some expressions that look like this by collecting like terms. So in this expression we've got five different terms. We've got three A terms and we've got two B terms. Now we can simplify this expression by collecting like terms. So first of all let's have a look at all the A terms. We've got an A term here, we've got another A term here, so that's A plus A, that gives us two lots of A, and we've got another A term here. So we can combine all three of these terms into one term, so A plus A plus A, we've got three A's. So we can rewrite this as 3A, and now if we collect our B terms, we've got a plus B here, so that's plus one B, plus another B, well, we've got two b's, that's plus two b. So we can change our expression from five terms now to two terms. It's more simplified. We've collected like terms. And we can't go any further. This is fully simplified. You might be tempted to write 5ab or something like that, but that would not work. If you've got three apples and you add on two bananas, that does not give you five apple bananas. They are separate things, okay? So this is fully simplified. Okay, let's do another one. So we've got this long expression here, so let's collect like terms. So first of all, let's look at the A terms. So we've got 9A here, and then we're adding on another four A's. So that gives us 13 A's in total. But now if we look over here, we are subtracting an A, and that is minus one A. So we've got nine A's plus four A's, that gives us 13 A's but we're taking away 1a, so we're now left with 12a's. So we could say that that is 12a, that is 12a, and now let's look at our b terms. We've got a plus 2b, and we are adding on another b. So if we're starting off at two b's, and we're adding on another b, we now have three b's. So it's 12a plus 3b. Okay, let's do one more example. And again, let's start off with all the A terms. So let's collect the A terms. So we've got 5A here. Now we've got 2A squared here. I just want you to think about, are these two terms like terms? Now, if you watched the previous video, you would remember that they are not like terms. Okay, we cannot add an A to an A squared. It's a bit like thinking about adding, uh, if this was centimeters, and this is centimetres squared, you cannot add centimetres to centimetres squared. You can't add a length to an area. So 5a and 2a squared are not like terms, so we cannot add them together. Now we do have a minus 4a here, so we can add these together, and there are no more a terms. So 5a minus 4a, well that's just 1a. So that bit in red is just going to be 1a, or we could just write a. Now let's look at the B terms. So let's circle the B terms in green. So we've got a B term here. So that's plus 3B. And notice we don't have any more B terms. So we can't actually simplify this anymore. So we're just going to add that on. So plus 3B. Now let's finally look at our A squared terms. So we've got 2A squared here and 1A squared here. So if we circle those in purple. So what is 2A squared plus A squared? Well, it might be a bit confusing, but just imagine if we've got two of something and we add on one of something, well, that just gives us three of that something. So three of whatever we've got, and we've got a squared, so it's just three a squared. So we're going to add on three a squared, and this is fully simplified. We cannot add this red a to these three a squares here. That does not give you four a squared. That's what a lot of people mistakenly think. We cannot add them together. Okay, so it's over to you now. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and see if you can simplify these eight expressions by collecting like terms. Okay, so let's go through this now. So question number one. Well, we've got a C here. We've got another C here. That gives us two Cs plus another C. We are now at three Cs plus another C. That gives us four Cs in total. Now let's have a look at the next one. We've got a P term plus another P term. Uh, now that's all of the p terms. We don't have any more p terms. That is 2p. And now let's look at our q terms. We've got plus q plus another q. That's 
plus two Q plus another Q that is plus three Qs. So it's two P plus three Q. Okay, now let's look at question three. So we're starting off with seven Ts. We're adding on three Ts. So that gives us 10 Ts. And now we're taking away two Ts. So 10 Ts minus two Ts, that gives us eight Ts. So our answer is eight T. Question number four. Well, let's first of all look at the R terms. We've got eight R and we're taking away another R and that's all of the R's. So eight R minus one R we have seven R's. Now let's look at the S terms. So we've got plus six S and we're taking away four S's. And again, you could always think about these letters as um, items. So six um, sandals or six socks um, minus four socks. We are now left with two socks. So we are now left with plus two socks. Okay, question number five. So let's look at the X terms. We've got 10 X and we're taking away 10 X and that's all of the X's. Now, if we're starting with 10 of something and we're taking away 10 of something, we are now left with none of those things or zero. We could write zero X, but that's just gonna be zero. So now let's move on to the Y's. So we've got plus one Y plus another Y. We now have two Y's. So our answer, when we simplify all of this, we are just left with 2y. Now let's go on to question 6. So let's first of all look at the a squared terms. So we've got a squared here plus another a squared. That gives us two a squareds. And we don't have any more a squared terms. So we've got two a squared. Now let's move on to the a terms. So we've got plus a. And notice again, we don't have any more a terms. So we're just going to have to write that down. Plus a. Now let's move on to the B terms. So we've got plus B, and again, we don't have any more Bs, so we're just gonna write plus B. And finally, if we look at the B squared terms, we've got plus B squared plus another B squared, that is plus two B squared. Okay, question seven, let's look at the Ds. So we've got three Ds, and we're taking away five Ds. Now you might be a bit confused here. If we're starting off with three or something and we're taking away five, well, we now have minus two because three minus five is negative two. So we actually have minus two Ds. And this is where you've got to start moving away from actual items uh, because it's quite hard to think of minus two of something. Um, but just think about if it was three degrees, and it got five degrees colder, it would now be minus two degrees. Okay, so now let's look at the E terms. So we've got plus one E, and we're taking away two E's. So if we're starting off with one of something, and we're taking away two, we now have minus one. So it's minus one E, or we could just say minus E. Now, question number eight, our last question. So let's start off looking at the F terms. We've got two F's. Now we're taking away one F, we are now left with one F. And we're taking away another F. So if we, we, have, we, have, if we have one F and we're taking away another F, well, we, we don't have any Fs. So all of this just cancels out to zero. Now let's look at the, the numbers. So here, let's just look at the, actually, let's look at the Gs first. So we've got minus three G and we are adding on three G. So all you could think about it is we've got 3G and we're taking away 3G. So here we're also left with nothing. So these two will also cancel out with each other. We're left with nothing. So all we are left with is this term here, which is just plus 15. So that is our answer. We are just left with 15. So hopefully this video was helpful in that it helped you understand how we simplify expressions by collecting like terms. And notice how all of these questions, I've circled all of my like terms in the same color. Uh, and one other thing is when I'm circling my like terms, I'm always including the sign in front of it. In the next video, we're going to apply this uh, method to write down expressions for areas and perimeters of different 2D shapes. I'll see you then.